Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the academic procession and the Chancellor. I declare that the 599th Convocation of McMaster University for the conferring of degrees is now in session. Please be seated. <laughs> uh, good afternoon. I'm Dr. Leonard Waverman. Uh, proud to be the Dean of the Groot School of Business. It's my privilege and pleasure on behalf of McMaster University to welcome all of you, graduates and guests, to this convocation ceremony. I would like to start by recognizing and acknowledging that we meet today under traditional territories of the Mississauga and Haudenosaunee nations and within the lands protected by a dish with one spoon wampum agreement. I would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge some of the notable leaders joining me on stage today. Our Chancellor, Dr. Suzanne Labarge. Our President and Vice Chancellor, Dr. Patrick Dean. Our Provost and Vice President, academic, and today's Master of Ceremonies, Dr. David Farrar. Our Vice President, University Advancement, Ms. Mary Williams. Associate Deans, Directors, Chairs, Faculty Members, and Honored Guests. Before we start our formal program, I ask everyone in the hall to switch off any electronic device that may ring, beep, sing, or anything else during the ceremony. So today, this afternoon, we have PhDs and masters of the group. So to have a master's and an undergraduate education, you've been at the university a minimum of five years. How many of you, how many of you have been at the university for five years? How about six years? Put your hands up. Seven years? Eight? 
nine, I won't go any further. <laughs> so what you have gathered is deep knowledge of a specific area, or if you have an MBA in general business, of general business. But we hope, and what we've tried to do at the Groot is teach you much more than deep knowledge of a specific subject. Because with AI, the technology that's moving so quickly, deep knowledge depreciates quickly. And what you need to do to survive, even with a PhD these days, is to be outside your comfort zone, outside your silo. So we've taught you to collaborate, to communicate, to think deeply, because that's what you need, and that's what we have done at the Groot School of Business. That's how we've trained you. In business, novel is business as usual. Remember that. Remember us. You are our future. I would now like to turn the podium over to our chancellor, Dr. Suzanne Labarge, to deliver her welcoming remarks. Welcome, honored guests, staff, faculty, families, friends, and most importantly, graduates. This is an exciting day for all of you who are graduating today, as well as for all those people who have supported you and stood behind you, and in many cases have had a key role in you being here today. You've achieved a great deal to get here, and you should all be very proud of your success and looking forward to what the future might bring. Congratulations, and enjoy the ceremony. My name is David Farrar, and I am the Provost and Vice President Academic of the University. This afternoon, I have the great privilege of acting as your Master of Ceremonies. I would like to welcome Dr. Patrick Dean, President and Vice Chancellor, to the podium, who will be presenting our honorary degree recipients. Madam Chancellor, by the authority of the Senate of McMaster University, I have the honor to present Paul Demeray, Jr. and Ellen Demeray. Paul Demeray, Jr. and Ellen Demeray have established significant corporate and community legacies, both as a couple and as individuals. Mr. Demeray obtained a Bachelor of Commerce degree from McGill University and his MBA from the European Institute of Business Administration, France. He is chairman and co-CEO of Power Corporation and executive co-chairman of Power Financial, the firm he founded in 1984 to consolidate Power's major financial holdings. He is the director of many Power Group companies, including Great West Life, London Life, Canada Life, Investors Group, and McKenzie Investments. He is also chairman of Pogisa Holding SA and vice chairman of Group Bruxelles Lambert. Mr. Demeray is chairman of the International Economic Forum of the Americas, Canada, a trustee of the Brookings Institution, and a member of both the Business Council in the United States and of the Business Council of Canada. He has been named the Executive of the Year by the Academy of International Business. As a community leader, Mr. Demeray founded the major donors circle for Centraide Montréal and served as the organization's honorary chairman for two decades. He was also co-chair of the transformative A Force of Nature campaign for the Nature Conservancy of Canada. A philanthropist who created the McKenzie Investments Chair in Evidence-Based Investment Management at McMaster's de Groot School of Business, Mr. Demeray has received the Enseigne d'Officier de l'Ordre de la Couronne of Belgium, 
be named an officer of the Ordre National du Québec and Chevalier de la Légion d'Honneur in France. He has been an officer of the Order of Canada since 2005. Hélène Desmarais is a graduate of HEC Montréal, the business school of the University of Montreal. She is the chairperson of the school's board of directors, the first woman to hold that position, and she founded and remains a member of the International Advisory Board of HEC Montréal. She is also chair of the University of Montreal's Faculty of Medicine Advisory Committee. Ms. Desmarais is the founder Chief Executive Officer and Chair of the Centre d'Entreprise et d'Innovation de Montréal, a business incubator that has worked with more than 350 startup companies. She is also Chair of the Montreal Economic Institute and the Founder and Chair of the Entrepreneurial Development Committee of the Société de Développement Économique Ville-Marie. Ms. Desmarais is Chair of the Société d'Investissement Jeunesse and serves as Deputy Chair of the Montreal Symphony Orchestra, as well as Chair and Founder of its foundation. Ms. Desmarais has chaired a province of Quebec commission studying the healthcare industry and sits on a wide range of corporate and organizational boards, including Christian Dior, Garda World Security Corporation, the C.D. Howe Institute, the Institute for Governance of Private and Public Organizations, and Genome Quebec. A recipient of the Queen Elizabeth II Jubilee Medals in 2002 and 2012, she has also received the Order of Merit from the Université de Montréal and the Grand Montréalais Economic Sector Award, among many others. She is a member of the Order of Canada. Madam Chancellor, Paul Desmarais Jr. and Hélène Desmarais are iconic figures in both Canadian business and community leadership. Individually, their accomplishments and contributions have been recognized with the highest honors in their fields and in Canadian society. Today, I ask that you recognize their shared impact by conferring Paul and Hélène Desmarais the degree Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa. Paul Desmarais, Jr., by the authority of McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to confer upon you the degree Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa in McMaster University with all the rights and privileges pertaining to that degree. Hélène Desmarais, by the authority of McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to confer upon you the do degree Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa in McMaster University with all the rights and privileges pertaining to that degree. Congratulations. <laughs> we get you to sign the book. I would now like to ask Dr. Demare to address the deliver the convocation address. Thank you. Madam Chancellor, President Dean, honored guests, graduates, families and friends, good afternoon to you all, bonjour. Thank you for that kind and generous introduction, President Dean. Hélène and I are humbled and greet grateful to accept together these honorary doctorate of laws. Helen has asked me if I might speak on behalf of both of us, for we are truly a partnership in life, in raising our family, and in supporting each other's endeavors. It is a great pleasure to be with you all, graduates, and your families on this historic day of your lives. You've accomplished something very special. And you have done it at the De Groot, housed here at McMaster's, one of Canada's truly great institutions. McMaster's has for years been at the forefront of innovative 
and multidisciplinary approaches to teaching and research. The intellectual leadership at Mac Masters is why, in our group of companies, we were pleased to support the McKenzie Chair in Evidence-Based Investment Management, currently held by the Professor Katya Malinova, an expert in fintech and blockchain. I will mention that one of our very, very talented, I might say, graduates, Adam Faleski, a graduate of civil engineering from Ms. Mactors, is now CEO of Portage, our fintech investment arm. McMasters, we know, produces great insights and certainly great leaders. I would like to speak to you today about family, about looking after yourselves, and about values-based leadership. I will begin with some comments about my wife, Hélène, if I may, and about our partnership. Hélène was one of six kids and was raised by parents who were entrepreneurs in the insurance business. Her dad passed away much too young, and her mom went on to become the CEO of the insurance company they had built. I can tell you that was a rare thing in that time. Ellen witnessed the courage, great love, and spirit of energetic entrepreneurship from a young age. She has been a champion of entrepreneurship from the get-go, starting from running Photoshops to the point where she had actually seven of them in the city of Montreal. She had her four boys work with her for a buck an hour, sometimes an entire Saturday, and certainly during the holiday high seasons. They got to see for real what it took to make a business succeed, how to look after a customer's needs, how to run a cash register, and so on, which actually is a part they really love, they tell me. It was a hands-on education about business, you might say. Now let me share a few words um, about Hélène from our youngest son, Charles Edward. And I think the most revealing often about parents is what the children have to say about them. So in a book about dynamic young women entrepreneurs, Charles's profile, in fact, is the only man to appear in the book because he is a partner with two young women in their successful business that they've launched. He was asked about women and who had inspired him. And without hesitation, he said, and I quote, my mom, she is the most hardworking, persistent, intensive, and caring person I know. She has done an amazing job at following her dreams and making an impact. She works in multiple industries and does it with such an innovative and positive style of leadership. She is kind, yet extremely motivated, and dedicated to all their endeavors, which was, of course, helping Charles, making sure he get through his homework, I can tell you, which is a major task. <laughs> now, our eldest son also shared the following comments in another uh, book where he quotes uh, his mom without having talked to Charles about this. He says, my mom's track record comes from pure determination and grit. She has had a tremendous impact on Montreal and Quebec, my mother is determined, entrepreneurial, results-oriented, and more so than any person I have met. She has ingrained this in all her children. Her role in my life drives my own focus on diversity. Helen has taught and inspired all our sons. They are themselves now champions of leadership by women in creating equitable workplaces in their companies. She has been an incredible partner with me in raising our boys. Early in our marriage, we recognized that we needed to have a division of labor. I wish you all graduates, some of you are probably married, to have this lucky moment where Hélène oversaw really the educational paths, the parent-teacher nice, and I have to say weekends and holidays, helping with homework, course selection, and everything you can imagine on the academic side. I, of course, was relinquished to sports, although my wife reminded me the other day when I read this to her, I was also involved with the sports, and that's true. Um, but I certainly took care of the outdoor adventure, camping, fishing, as well as religious education. We have loved them deeply, but we've also expected a lot from them, as I'm sure this university does of all of you graduates, to do their best and to strive to be good people 
and citizens of this country. Your work as parents is really, of course, never over. You all know that here as you sit with your own children. And none of us is perfect as parents, that's for sure. We all make our mistakes. And we all have to learn as we go. And I know that good luck plays a large role. But the important thing is that we all do our best. I feel so fortunate being able to say that they all doing well and with them finding their own way in different business and community endeavors and the quality of their families. We remain close with them, which I see as our biggest shared accomplishment. Elena and I have been tightly bonded team in this endeavor, and I'm extremely grateful to her for it. Graduands, as you set off on the next phase of your lives, allow me to share a few thoughts. And I hope this sort of few words about our family and how it developed will also inspire you in terms of your relationships with your wives or spouses or husbands and being able to take up the challenge of raising future citizens of this country. But I'd like now to talk to you about um, the responsibilities and some of the philosophical things that I thought were pretty important in our lives. And, um, and the first one, believe it or not, I think is the project of taking care of yourselves. And as philosopher Socrates uh, famously said, the unexamined life is not worth living. So I expect you to have some introspection. What it means here is that there's an imperative of knowing who you are, your strengths and weaknesses, of committing to self-improvement, and to strengthening your core values and character. And I'm sure through your education here, you've been really working at that. But you're going to have to continue. You're going to be, have to be open to new things, cultivate an interest, and I really say cast the net wide. Cultivate the interests in the arts. Do some traveling if you haven't done any. Savor life's bounty is also important. And take some satisfaction also from your accomplishments, as I'm sure you will be doing with your families tonight. Be disciplined in your personal habits. Look after your health, your body, and your mind. Quality time with your own family and close friends really matters. And the older you get, the more important you realize this is. Don't let your work or engagement swamp you to the point where these things become secondary, which is bound to happen to all of you. I hope you'll remember this advice, though. Personally, I see spiritually, spirituality as part of self-care. I'm talking here about our sense of connection to something larger than ourselves. Call it connecting to a higher power, if you will. I believe this is a force that we can all tap into. In fact, every time I'm out in the country and walk in the forest, I marvel at nature's beauty. It's a superb harmony out there. And you see all these abundant little universes that are all each unique, and yet coming together to form a whole that's almost perfect. This, believe it or not, brings me great tranquility, and it re-energizes me. And I wish you to find something in your life that brings you that kind of tranquility, because you're going to need it in today's fast-changing world. As you all know, hiking in mountains and cruising in oceans also, and taking on nothing like a canoe trip in white water two, or even three, to invariably remind us of how small we are, and how nature has a way of teaching us humility. Now let me also stress, Canada needs companies, and we need to create jobs as well. You are graduates from first-class rate business school, and you've worked on a myriad of things, whether it's strategy, finance, marketing, accounting. You've learned, hopefully, to work in teamwork, so important, and also to communicate, which is becoming more and more important. And you want to get out of, the, out of these and useful and essential skills that will be really helpful to you. And I really tell you to build something great, either a product, a service, uh, that people want, need. Many of you, I hope, will create and own maybe even your own companies. But even if you don't own your own companies, it's not really what matters. What matters is to contribute wherever you are, to help contribute to build something, even in large companies. We own a lot of large companies, and I can tell you the incumbents, it's really tough out there. 
and we need dynamic people that are innovative, and they're going to reinvent ourselves as companies as we go forward. Helena and I believe passionately in celebrating entrepreneurship and success, as you could see. And, from, and for you to create value and prosperity is very important because, after all, it creates prosperity for other families. And I'd say there's nothing wrong with trying to rise to the top, and there's nothing wrong with leading whatever that you want to lead. It's important to do it, and it's important, I think, to aspire to it. But be wise here, because the idea of being wealthy is something maybe to strive after, but certainly not for its own sake. To win the lotteries, we say, can actually, frankly, ruin your life, and I've seen it often. If you do not know yourself, have not cared for yourself and cultivated a broad sense of humanity, if you have not cared for others, then material success or high position can only, de only feel, in the end, very empty. And you really don't want to be there. Let me mention certain core values that I think are critical to enjoying a meaningful success and a critical, genuine leadership. I would start with integrity uh, as one of these important values. Integrity is really about striving to do the right thing, to do it the right way, and to make this your habit of action. Life is full of temptations. Certainly to cut corners, to let things slide. How many times we've seen ourselves rationalize things and to compromise your values. Don't let yourself cross the line. I taught my kids a line in the sand. Just don't cross it. Demonstrate integrity makes people want to work with you, partner with you, and invest in your future. Integrity is really the cornerstone of your reputation in business, but also in your lives. Responsibility is another key value. I believe profoundly that business must embrace a responsibility not only to its shareholders, but to our communities in which we operate. This would include charitable giving, a critical ingredient, I think, to successful communities, dynamic communities at least, to be profitable, to build value for your investors, and also to give back is important. I also believe that demonstrating respect for others is vital to how organization and a healthy society functions. A deep respect coupled with this word called empathy. If you're not familiar with it, really meditate it. Because it's not only what is right, it is key to unlocking the creative potential of the people around us. The, poia, the poet Maya Angelou expressed this well when she said, I've learned that people will forget what you've said, as you probably will with me today. <laughs> people will forget also what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Remember that today. Take that with you today. Hard work is that daily discipline of striving to get things done, and done right, and not to be satisfied until you have. You've all had to do hard work here to get to, through to this university and to excel. You probably climbed a mountain, but it doesn't stop today. These habits will have changed you, I'm sure, but I'm really to tell you, stick with them. It's only the beginning. Outcomes are so much better, and life so much more rewarding when you embrace, embrace this virtue. The final cornerstone I'd like to talk to you about is the idea of courage. Um, courage is about following through, sticking by your commitments and your values, even when it seems tough to do so. In business, it's about taking measured risk, avoiding timidity on the other hand, and rashness on the other. We need you to be your strongest and most thoughtful, thoughtful selves. Need your courage, your integrity, empathy, your ambition, hard work, your commitment to your families and communities. In short, Canada needs your leadership. Creating prosperity through responsible business that are well-run, socially engaged, is a big part, I believe, in how we will address the major issues facing our society and create meaningful lives for you all. 
Many thanks to all of you for listening to us, to me actually, but many of the values that I've shared with my wife. I wish each of you success in your journey, including your families, your friends, and of course your careers. Savor this day, you've all certainly earned it. Hélène and I want to lastly express our grateful thanks to the Gugut School of Business and McMasters for this great honor you've given us. Un grand merci. Thank you very much, Dr. Demeray. I think he's given you an awful lot to think about. And I think it's important because if you listen to the citation, you can tell that he's lived it himself. And I think that's very important. One of the privileges of being chancellor is that you actually get to grant these honorary degrees. And, and it is important because what we do as we do it is to look at people who have either made an incredible contribution to their field, done some marvelous things for their community, and we have here two honorary degree recipients who have done all of this. Their business acumen is well known nationally and internationally. But they have used it to build up Canada, to build up Quebec, where they come from. Their community activities are felt through their companies throughout the country. And they are a wonderful example of what the best Canada can produce is. And we are absolutely delighted to have them as part of the McMaster community now. So thank you. President Dean will now come forward and present the graduands to our chancellor for admission to their degrees. Will the graduands please stand? Madam Chancellor, on behalf of McMaster University Senate, I present to you these candidates and those in absentia in order that you may confer the appropriate degrees upon them. And I bear witness that they are worthy and suitable. Graduands, by my authority and that of the McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to admit to those before me today and those in absentia to their individual degrees at McMaster University with all of the rights and privileges pertaining to those degrees. My sincere congratulations to you all. Please be seated. Graduates, I now ask each of you to join me on stage so that the Chancellor and I may welcome you to the McMaster Community of Scholars.
Ladies and gentlemen, so that each graduate's name may be heard, it would be appreciated if during the presentation of the graduates, you would hold your collective applause to the end of each degree category. Thank you. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Cameron Eshgi. Samira Farivar. Mohammed Mujbil Kabir. Nicole O'Brien. Farhad Sadah. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree of Master of Business Administration. Farzana Asjirali Abdul Hussein. Paige Virginia Akison. Gori Gail Agarwal. Pratik Agarwal, Farhan Ehtisham, Yusuf Akawi, Michael Alp, Maria Christine Amanti. Yajur Anand. Dominic Mark Alessius Andrade. Anna Archishif Swaka. Sarabhajit Singh Arora. Donia Aslam. Renalani Avasti. Atezaz Paig. Daniel Smyrna Banks. Ronjoy Basso. Christopher Edward Bednars. Diane Betts. Jassy Singh Bahathal. Jawad Khaled Bhatt. Kevin Curtis Chisman. Paljit Singh Chopra. Shanto Chaudhry. Braden Clerks. Margot Cunningham. Kyle A. Charniuska. Daniel D'Angelo. Rishiraj Rohit Dalvi. Rit Nicholas Richard Davis. Gregory Alexander D'Souza. 
Julia Alexandra Dean. Gabriela Margaret Deminx. Adrian Denomi. Kanika Damaja. Avanij Darmraj. Jaspreet Dutt. Sonalisa Dangana. Catherine Eleanor Di Batista. Elizabeth Lewis Dolimore. Yu Ying Chiang Dong. Ian Dranstovichkis. Michael Gregory Drennan. Carleen Jean Dudek. Ahmed Al-Ashrawi. Sharawi. Morgan Page Ferris. Kunal Melind Figad. Mohammed Aqid Fiaz. Jessica Michelle Fraser. Tianhui Geng. Ross Franco Genovese. Cameron Spencer Cherry. Elena Glushitsa. Shaheen Mansour Gadrawala. John Gormali. Sorab Gupta. Caitlin Ann Hartford. Brittany Hawkins. Brittany Marie Hawcroft. Muhammad Tahir Husseini. Michael Agbukaki Aita Magabur. Rohini Mary Jacob. Rohit Jane. Richard Jalonen. Jet Yanchak. Ekta Shah. Padmanab Jha. Vandan Anil Vondron. Chris Jones. Stephen Willis Carlet. Bonnie Jean Kemp. Ariz Abid Khan. Hamza Khan. Maz Khan. Sumiyaranjan Khan Sama. Zoe Elizabeth Joanne Kitchen. Sonprit Singh Kolpur Singh Kotchar. Amanda Noel Konash. Tyler Aaron Koskeno Oya. Mary 
Megan Allen Lee. Xiaoryu Li. Zongguang Li. Lexi Len. Fei Liu. Fei Yang Liu. Janet Liu. Andre Louis, Xiao Feng Liu, Connor Ling, Faisal Malik, Sara Malik. Alicia Catherine Mark Aditi Megalani Andrew Richard Morizzo Kevin Nguyen Duong's Thoi Yong Shin Shinawanzo Noan Madi Gregory Alton Zachary Tyler Page Sumith Paspulati Krishna Patel Jamie Payton Lana Pershik. Camilo Radi Perron. Akanksha Puri. Redesh Ravendranath. Emily Kathleen Reed. Kevin Albertiango Robbie Corey Adam Robert James Robinson Sharwin Jess Rodriguez Kirsten Salvatore Jose Ali Sanchez Lira Simrat Pal Singh Sandhu. Sangeet Surab. Karan Thess. Shoaib Nazar Sheikh. Brian Austin Shoup. Grace Elizabeth Simpson. Robert Patrick Sinclair. Erin Nicole Sneglorov. Aldo Subashi. Pooja Talati. Kyle Lauren Tapson. Rakulen Sanabalan. Mallory Ellen Elizabeth Thompson. Jason Tour. Kyle Trudell. Elizabeth Karen Van Dyke. Nicholas Vecchi. Emily Christina Voison. Idris Wafi. 
Shui Wang. Abir Wasim. Richard Waxman. John James Wipperstrick. Tian Jiao Wu. Ru Yu Ji. Ji Ai Yua. Jehu Yi. Muhammad Osama Yusuf. Jenna Yuan. Fan Zheng. Michelle Zheng. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Finance. Lunlun Chen. Zenyi Chen. Zhengyu Cheng. Mingming Deng. Ying Tao Dong. Yu Kang Duan. Shi Hui Fan. Zen Yugu. Ji Han Gu. Jing Hao. Aiden Huang. Corny Jiang. Kekeng Jiang. Jiang Li. Patricia Li. Lu Bi Li. Ji Liu. Mejia Liu. Shengyun Liu. Ian Liu. Ching Yang Chui. Jia Sun. Guan Suk Tran. Bin Wang. Dan Chen Wang. Ming Xuan Wang. Yu Ying Wang. Zun Wang. Chen Zhu Zi. Roger Yan. Maggie Yang. Yinghua Yang. Zhu Han Yang. Zinwi Yan. Mahak Mihak Ali Zaidi. Tianqi Zeng. 
Chunyu Zheng. Xilin Zheng. Kida Zheng. Zioxi Shu. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Health Management. Salah al-Din Salah al-Salahat. Heather Bader. Luana Gail Bithun. Heather Marie Blackburn. Tracy Kathleen Borsato. Adriana Cagiano. Corina Coffey. Jamie Coleman. Tania Darpino. Sarah Elizabeth de Marcert. Corey S. Fraser. Diana Lynn Hallett. Rosario Ann Capsi Harris Gallia. April Jacobs. Emily Rose Kelly. Kristen Beth Kennedy. Sophia Khalfan. Catherine Jan Lecorno Levet. Aruna Mahabir. Cheryl Vanessa Manning. Philip Donald Joseph McGee. Rita Nualu. Muhammad Yusuf. Omar Khalil. Gillian Shea Owens. Adrian Pang. Anisha Patel. Brandy Pidgeon. Jadunath B. Ragahonath. Tina Melissa Ranta. Simon Robertson Palmer. Nicole Ruff. Catalina Maria Sanchez. Christopher Michael Spiran. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Science. Muhammad Adil Abu Rabia. Muhammad Hamdan Abu Sam Samanda. Hey. 
Joyria Farzan Ali. Jessica Awaya. Khaled Fahmawi. Marwa Mohsen Tolba Fauzi. Victor Kolawal Kibanero. Tanya Weine. Alma Guadalupe Joardo Nenanz. Nurisana Kangaswaran. Bega Karimi. Manpreet Kaur. Afsun Hazai. Himanth Kumar Nampuri. Sahar Nikneya. David Panachia. Sapna Patel. Daniel Colin Pearson Herdes. Ahmed Raghib Sharawi. Shiriak Shah. Karan Sharma. Mathura Vithyananasan. Basil Hill Daniel Woody. Let's give one more round of applause to all of our graduates. I would now like to introduce Ms. Brittany Hawkins, a graduate of the degree Master of Business Administration, who will be delivering the valedictory address. Good afternoon. To the family and friends of today's graduates, thank you for your love and support over the past several years. Dr. Suzanne Labarge, Chancellor of McMaster University, Dr. Patrick Dean, President and Vice Chancellor of McMaster University, Dr. David Farrar, Provost and Vice President of McMaster University, and all other faculty and staff, thank you for your leadership, guidance, and tolerance through our time at DeGroote. Finally, fellow graduates, thank you for the experience of a lifetime here at McMaster. When I applied to DeGroote in late 2015, I was scared. Scared to leave my comfort zone in the world of science, scared to leave my home, and scared to, si to try something new and different. Leaving what was comfortable to me at that time turned out to be one of the greatest decisions I've ever made. The friendships, experience, and impact developed at McMaster have given me the tools needed to make a difference outside of McMaster. At DeGroote, we've learned to venture outside of our comfort zone, and the rewards have always been worth it. For some of us, it was out of our comfort zone to accept our offer and move to Canada and come to DeGroote. For others, it meant getting involved in extracurricular activities or transitioning to a new industry or career path. No matter our reasons for being here, we have all had a large impact on one another. It was pounded into our heads, networking, networking, networking. We never expected that networking on day one would turn into the new friendships and long-lasting relationships that it has. 
Whether we came to the group with a friend or made new friends along the way, our experiences here are shared only with one another. And they are experiences we will carry with us through our careers and the rest of our lives. It has been an irreplicable journey that I am grateful for. No journey, however, comes without struggles. Late night economic studying, marketing analytics, or trying to figure out what WAC was and why we were learning it. But the positives outweigh the negatives every time. Golfing to support women in management, learning about operations at the local craft brewery, or bringing the Queen's Cup back to DeGroote. All of the events, socials, and experiences have shaped how we view our time together. Some of our greatest experiences were in class, learning, but the majority were, the majority were outside of class, studying for behavioral finance, planning panels and diversity events, or just going to the Phoenix after an exam. Through the coursework we've studied, the friends we have made, and the experience we have had, I am confident in our abilities to have a positive impact on the world. We have been given all of the tools to lead in business. It's up to us now to use them. I believe that with the guidance of today's graduates, Canadian businesses will thrive both with their bottom line and their CSR initiatives. In today's global climate, it is important to know who you are and to fight for what you believe is right. I have no doubt that this group of strong-willed graduates will do just that. We, as a generation, are responsible for the future. Not only the future of business, but the future of people. We have the ability to educate and to influence future leaders and the world we all live in. Let us be sure to create a world for them that we have always hoped for. Let us make a difference in the lives that have yet to begin. And let us make change for all of those who aren't fortunate enough to have that opportunity. We have the opportunity and the ability to make a positive impact. In moving to the next phase of our lives, let us be sure to do just that. It is with passion, courage of conviction, and a strong sense of self that we take ne our next steps into the world. Let's make them count. Thank you. Thank you, Brittany. May I now introduce Ben Schapterlin, a graduate of the Bachelor of Arts class of 2001 and the Master of Business Administration class of 2009 and a representative of the McMaster Alumni Association. Ben will now deliver the Alumni Association address. Thank you. Chancellor Labarge, President Dean, Madame et Monsieur Desmarais, award winners, honorees, faculty, fellow alumni, guests, and especially members of the McMaster class of 2019. If convocation could talk, it might tell you, your life is changing, so come take part in this ancient ritual while your family and friends take pictures of you wearing a borrowed gown. In reality, crossing this stage today marks one of the most significant changes in your life. You are perhaps moving from your career as a student or simply resuming your career as a professional, having taken a break to complete your degree. Or maybe you're going to trade the goals and routines of university for something more freeform and personal. We all experience the graduation transition in our own way. No doubt, many more transitions are ahead as you move through the stages of your life. What won't change is that your experience earning your degree will always be part of you, and you will always be part of this community. At times, that connection will feel strong. Other times, it will take a backseat gracefully to other priorities. But when you do want to turn that lifelong relationship into an activity, a social media connection, volunteering, or any one of a dozen other kinds of opportunity, your alumni association will be there for you. That's what we do. You can read about your alma mater, your fellow alumni and classmates in Mac, the news magazine for alumni, either in print or online, or through our monthly e-newsletter called Maroon Mail. You can check out the alumni site and read about fellow grads' real lives after Mac. You can learn from the career newsletter Insights and join the Mac alumni communities on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. 
You are now members of MAC-10, with programming specifically geared to the needs of graduates within the first 10 years upon graduation. Whether you're looking for assistance getting a job, or as you navigate your next steps in your career, the McMaster Alumni Association has a number of resources, events, and programs to help, as well as an alumni career counselor, and we will, of course, offer some fun social gatherings too. The MAA offers things you probably did not realize, like great deals on home and auto insurance or health and dental coverage plans, for example. And if you think that moving away from Hamilton is going to cut your connection to McMaster, that's just not the case. If you do your part by keeping your contact information up to date on your alumni profile found on the alumni website, you will receive invitations and notices about the events taking place near where you live. We can't be everywhere, but you may be surprised to see where McMaster events pop up. And with online networking events, mentoring, and webinars, you can always stay connected to McMaster. When you leave here today, I know it's likely that nothing I've just said will stick with you. And that's fine, I won't take it personally. That said, I do have a couple of tips for you. I would encourage you to wear your McMaster pride and always share where you went to school. You'll make some great connections with fellow McMaster graduates and the rest of the folks around you will just be impressed with your credentials. And whenever that day comes that you're curious and ready to connect, we'll be here, your alumni association, which after these spring ceremonies, will have over 200,000 alumni ready to help. Members of the class of 2019, congratulations on your convocation and welcome to the McMaster Alumni Association. We are thrilled to have you officially join the McMaster alumni family. Congratulations. Thank you, Ben. I now invite Dr. Dean back to the podium to deliver his president's address. Madam Chancellor, Dr. Demeray, Dr. Demeray, esteemed colleagues, graduates, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Like many of the rituals by which we order our lives, convocation is a combination of the private and the public. Today we're celebrating your individual achievements as well as our collective renewal through those achievements and through the futures that you will all make. Convocation is also a form of therapy in that it is intended to give acknowledgement, focus, and expression to our awareness of change, of the life transitions which all of you are experiencing right now, and also of the broader shifts in our society and culture, and those implicate us all. One phase of life is ending for you and another is beginning, uh, perhaps still within McMaster, if you're planning further alternative study, or as is likely the case for most of you, beyond our university. While I said convocation helps to give focus to our awareness of change, that is not to say that it necessarily simplifies moments like this. After all, while the end of one phase can be a relief, it can also occasion a sense of loss or even grief. And while we may approach the beginning of the next phase with excitement, that will also likely come with an admixture of nervousness and perhaps even fear. So the combination of emotions on a day like this will be different, I think, for all of us. Now, I'm an English professor going through changes of my own. As you may know, uh, I leave McMaster University at the end of this convocation season. So perhaps you will indulge me in a brief poetic moment. I want to read you some lines from T.S. Eliot's poem, Little Gidding. It is the last of his four quartets published in September 1942, in the middle of the Second World War. And it is a riff, although Eliot would probably not have called it that, on the saying which Mary Queen of Scots had embroidered 
on her royal vestments while she was imprisoned in England prior to execution. On ma fin, gite mon commencement. In my end is my beginning. Nearly 400 years later, also in London, England, and with the massive destruction of successive German bombing raids all around him, T.S. Eliot amplified Queen Mary's motto in this way. What we call the beginning is often the end, and to make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where we start from. These, I think, are helpful words on an occasion like this. While it is tempting at times of change to mourn the loss of something past or coming to an end, it is important to keep your focus on the future, however unknown or however unknowable that may be. For Mary, Queen of Scots, imprisoned and under threat of execution, the future was imagined as a Christian afterlife. For T.S. Eliot, thinking about Nicholas Farrar's 17th century religious community in the context of wartime Britain, it was that and more. It was a social and cultural resurgence animated by belief and unified by transcendent values. To make an end is to make a beginning. That is our theme for today, and we should all embrace it however differently we see ourselves starting out and however contrasting are our hopes and ambitions for the future. Acceptance of change, along with the constant process of renewal that it implies, is fundamental to success, whether for individuals like you and me or for institutions like McMaster, in which we have jointly found a place over these past several years. Change drives us forward to challenge ourselves and to scale even greater heights. Now, it's not as if we have much choice in the matter. The Greek philosopher Heraclitus is reputed to have observed that change is the only constant in life. But we do have a choice about how we respond to that change, whether we will treat ends as beginnings or merely as ends. And no less a thinker than Confucius has pointed out the link between the acceptance of change and growth in the individual. He's reputed to have said that they must often change who would be constant in happiness or wisdom. That last point is an important one for all of us as a university family. Despite the fact that universities have been around for over 900 years and are seen as one of the most stable human institutions in the West, they have not been immune to change. Indeed, all the teaching, learning, research, and discovery that happens in a place like McMaster is premised on the relentless, restless pursuit of truth. To be successful, the university must always be changing, developing, and creating new beginnings of one kind or another. In the nine years I've been at McMaster, I have been witness to constant and far-reaching change. The most obvious example pertains to the physical fabric of the place and the changes we've seen there, the demolition of Wentworth House and the construction of L.R. Wilson Hall, the expansion of studio art and engineering experiential education facilities, groundbreaking for the Peter George Center for Living and Learning, opening of the David Braley Health Sciences Center downtown, and construction of the outdoor indigenous meeting circle, to name only a few of those changes. Mention of engineering experiential education and the Gerald Hatch Center in particular points to a major shift in pedagogy that has occurred during the last decade, moving your experience as learners towards experiential, technology-enabled, self-directed, and community-engaged ways of learning. And the university has transitioned overall 
into a more vital engagement with its local and global communities in recognition of our mission to advance human and societal health and well-being. So substantive has been that shift that our university was recently ranked second in the world for our contribution to the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations. Listing off all these changes gives me pause to reflect on the speed with which time passes. I wonder whether you feel as I do, as if it was only yesterday that you arrived at McMaster. But think about this. What we're celebrating today is for most of you the successful completion of an educational project to which you've devoted approximately 20% of your lives so far. The nine years I have spent here account for the same percentage of my adult life. It has been time very well spent, I hope you will agree. But it has been spent nevertheless. And the task today is to ponder the time ahead of you and to consider the thoughtful and, I hope, joyful ways in which you might use it, making use, I hope, of all the skills and experience you've worked so hard to acquire during your time at McMaster. Now, it is interesting that we talk about our relation to time using the same language that we use for commerce. We talk about spending time. Sometimes we invest it. And sometimes the investment of time pays off, we say. There is a witty rejoinder to this in one of the very first self-help self guides ever written. It's a book called How to Live on 24 Hours a Day by the English author Arnold Bennett. It was published in 1910. It offers a wide array of advice for living life to the full. But in the book, Bennett notes that time is indeed a commodity, but a commodity of a very special self-renewing sort. The supply of time, he says, is truly a daily miracle. You wake up in the morning, and lo, your purse is magically filled with 24 hours, a new 24 hours, of the unmanufactured tissue of the universe of your life. It is unstealable, and no one receives either more or less than the 24 hours you receive every morning. Perhaps the best thing about time, he notes further, is that you don't have access to credit in time. He writes that you cannot draw on the future. It is impossible to get into debt. You can only waste the passing moment. You cannot waste tomorrow. It is kept for you. So tomorrow is kept for you. My hope is that you can all make a success of tomorrow and of the new beginning and the new life that you're about to embark on. While this ceremony represents an ending for you and for me, it is also an ending for our esteemed Chancellor, Dr. Suzanne Labarge. Dr. Labarge has served McMaster with great distinction for the last six years as our 18th Chancellor, and she has presided at all of our convocation ceremonies during that time as well as acting as our most prominent university volunteer. These spring convocations are the last ceremonies that Chancellor Labarge will preside at, and I didn't want to end without recognizing her service and extending our thanks for all that she has done. <clears throat> so there are many of us saying goodbye. Valediction is always difficult, but I remind you, to make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where we start from. My very, very best wishes to you all. Thank you very much, President Dean and congratulations to the class of 2019. As one of those 200,000 McMaster alumni you now join, I'm gonna be really interested to see where you end up. 
You've heard some wonderful phrases, wonderful words today, and a lot to think about. So you'll be grateful to know I'm not going to add to them. I just want to say something. As a fellow MBA, albeit from a different school, I remember being where you are today and facing a world unknown where I would ever end up. And I can assure you, I never thought it would be here. And I envy you. I don't want to repeat my career and start over, but I envy you today. The world you're going out to is so exciting and so open to the skills that you have acquired. The opportunities you have are infinite. And I hope you take full advantage of the possibilities and keeping in mind some good grounded sense to keep who you are firmly in mind as you do this. But I wish you all the best of luck as you go forward. Now, President Dean mentioned I was leaving, and as he did too, I've been associated with President Dean now for the full six years. And his contribution to the student life, and particularly I want to mention the business, the, the DeGroote School, has been phenomenal. He really has emphasized the attention to student well-being, to the student environment, to the experience for students. But I'm not sure how many of you know just how responsible he is along, of, but first of all, by hiring Dean Waverman to get to the, the school to the kind, to renew the school to provide the level of education that you have today and are fully benefiting of. So, on behalf of hopefully of both you and the school in general, thank you very much, President Dean. Now, in closing, I have a few final announcements. A reception will be held for the graduates and their guests in Hamilton Convention Center, Wentworth Room C, immediately following the ceremony. Finally, I would ask that you please remain standing at your seats until the academic procession and the graduates have left the hall. Please join now in the singing of our national anthem. After the singing of the anthem, this convocation stands adjourned. <laughs>